wake up. It's the Sleep Unplugged podcast, episode 87, Sleep Masks. I'll wear a mask for you. Welcome everyone to the Sleep Unplugged podcast. My name is Chris Winter. I'm a neurologist and sleep specialist and your host for this episode of the podcast. If you're new to the Sleep Unplugged podcast family, welcome. If you're a veteran of the podcast, welcome back. We are glad you're here. So we're going to talk about sleep masks today. I think this is going to be a fun topic. I think it's going to be a very practical topic to talk about because sleep masks for some people can really make a tangible difference in the quality of their sleep at a relatively low cost. So we'll be talking about those today. As always, if you want to get in touch with the show, you can find me on social media. That's Dr. Chris Winner, Dr. Chris Winner, um, Twitter, Dr. Chris Winner, Instagram, TikTok, Blue Sky Threads. We have a YouTube page. It is, if you just type in Sleep Unplugged, it'll go to our YouTube page and you can find videos of all the content that we put down. And soon we'll be shooting videos from an undisclosed, exciting place, more details on that to follow. So if you're not a regular consumer of the YouTube page, hang in there. There might be some cool video content on the way. I've written two books. One is called The Sleep Solution, Why Your Sleep is Broken and How to Fix It, as well as The Rested Child. And my producer, Maeve, wants me to remind you to subscribe to the page, like the page, and if you're so inclined, write a review of the page. We like any feedback that we can get. We always start the show off with comments, corrections, criticisms, and I wanted to highlight a few comments that we got about our episode a couple episodes back on sleep and fear. And uh, one of those was, let's see here, Tay T wrote, nothing magic, but a little tart cherry juice with a good amount of magnesium feels like a treat and at a minimum isn't going to mess up my sleep like alcohol does. Just have to keep your expectations in check. Could not agree more. That's exactly where we want to be when it comes to our sleep. It's choosing something that's not going to mess things up, maybe might move the needle 5% and keeping the expectation, just like Tati said, in that range of, well, couldn't hurt, or maybe it would help a little bit and not, I have a really problematic sleep issue going on. I hope and pray to some God that this sleepy girl mocktail is going to solve my problem because most likely it won't. And this is echoed uh, by Chura now who wrote, these things were a huge source of frustration for me. And what he's mentioning, what he's referring to are the remedies, the could this be the cure for your sleep? The constant quote, try my sleep stack and you won't believe it. Or quote, if you aren't doing this one thing for your sleep, you don't know what you're missing. Well, guess what? None of them work. And you start wondering what's wrong with you. Seems there aren't many magic bullets in life. And if it sounds too good to be true, dot, dot, dot. And I love a good dot, dot, dot. So thank you very much for both of those. A couple episodes back, we mentioned Rachel, who had contacted the show with a voice memo. And as promised, so much for connecting i wanted to let you know i'd finished reading the book and i also wanted to thank you um i don't actually have problems sleeping but i am a bit rubbish with my sleep habits and often will stay up working late and i have small children who will be up early and um one of the things that really really helped me from the book was the ice bucket challenge and just the thought of like having to get up at a regular time no matter what yes. and practicing that since I've been reading the book so I've been actually putting that into practice um, for probably the last couple of weeks has massively massively helped me so um, it, yeah it's made me be much stricter around my bedtime but also I'm waking up feeling a lot less groggy as well and naturally um, and I know that's not a surprise to you but I just wanted to thank you and um, now for embedding this new habit and um, on to good things <laughs> thanks then bye Thank you, Rachel. I really appreciate everyone taking the time to inter interact with the show. It makes it feel more like a community and less like one random guy just talking about sleep. So I really appreciate the feedback. 
As always, we start the show off with a musical quotation. And this is an interesting one because we're kind of going back to episode four of the podcast when I actually mentioned this artist who is Leonard Cohen. So I'll Wear a Mask for You is a quotation from his song, um, I'm the Man. And uh, I'm sorry, I'm Your Man, sorry. Uh, which is uh, the title of his eighth studio album. I'm Your Man was also a track off of that album, which was one of his release singles, which I adore this album. I, and it's interesting because I discovered this album back when I was in high school because this album had the song Everybody Knows, which was on the Christian Slater Pump Up the Volume soundtrack, which we, we talked about in episode four. And back when we first started the podcast, we didn't really have the tradition of formally putting a quotation in the title that referred to a musical piece or a musical artist. Now we do. So Leonard really didn't get his due at that time because we were talking about Hallelujah, I think, at the time. And I'm Your Man had Everybody Knows. It had the song I'm Your Man, First We Take Manhattan, which is the title track off the song, which is awesome. And it's interesting to have music in your life when you're young Leonard was 54 when he recorded this album, which is a little older than I am. And when I listen to that album now, it, especially the song, I'm Your Man, it really kind of resonates differently than it did when I listened to it in high school. I also like the song because there's a line that says something about the beast won't go to sleep. I would tear your sheets or something like that. We talked about bedding last time. So lots of references to sleep, amazing artist. And uh yeah and 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 we always kind of link things sometimes to David Bowie David Bowie released released Black Star almost immediately before he died and Leonard Cohen had a similar situation his final album his 14th album was called You Want It Darker and he released it and died very soon after that and so there's often been parallels about these two you know, songwriting geniuses giving this final gift as their legacy right before they passed away. And they're both Black Star and You Want It Darker, both really amazing albums. So You Want It Darker, if you want it darker in your bedroom, then there's no way to get it darker than using a sleep mask. So that's how we'll transition into the content. Oh, I've got to mention one thing very quickly. I was taking a walk, ran into one of my neighbors, and my neighbor said, it was really sweet of you to highlight. We're, we're back to Kathleen again. This is the last time I'm going to mention Kathleen. So a few episodes ago, Kathleen wrote in the show and she did not like me talking before I actually got into the content. She basically wanted me to hit record and start talking about the topic related to sleep. And sure. Um, so anyway, some people wrote back and said they didn't like that. And so I kind of defended her and said, look, we're, we're all entitled to our, our, entitled to our opinions. And I want to make sure that everybody gets voices, not just people who praise my book and send me audio messages, but people like Kathleen who said, like, you know, enough talking about Leonard Cohen and David Bowie, get to it. We're here for sleep content. And my neighbor stopped me and said, I listened to your episode about phones and it was really sweet of you to defend Kathleen. Although I find myself feeling disappointed because, because Kathleen's never going to hear it. I mean, I said, what do you mean? I recorded, she can hear it. She said, yeah, but Kathleen made it very clear that she fast forwards until you get to the content of your show and then she starts listening. So I'm fearful that Kathleen will not know that you came to her defense and read her comment online. I was like, well, I never really thought about that. But anyway, Kathleen, if you're listening, we we, we support you and, and, and we're glad you're here. Even if you fast forward all the great stuff about Leonard Cohen, who is awesome. So sleep masks. I, we've talked about sleep masks before. We did, we've done two episodes now that were holiday gift guides, sort of late November around Black Friday, where we've talked about sleep masks. And we also talked about light and its influence on sleep early in the show. And so I've been wanting to do this episode for a long time. I also get sent a bunch of masks that I've tried out. If you name a sleep mask, I promise you I've got it. And we'll talk about specific masks towards the end of the show, but I got this really interesting mask from a company called Aura Circle. Got it actually before Christmas, and it just didn't quite make it to me in time before the Black Friday episode, because it was, I think it was coming from abroad. And so I thought, well, you know, that's okay. I'll just hang on to it and I'll do an episode on sleep masks. 
And so that's kind of how this idea came about. I also use sleep mask. I travel with a sleep mask in my computer bag and have often told audiences when I speak about sleep, you know, my guess is if you actually had a sleep mask and you used it for two straight weeks, my guess is you would, 50% uh, of people who did it would never go back. So we'll do a little fun experiment here and I'll mention at the bottom of the show to remind you, if you don't have a sleep mask, at the end of this episode, purchase one. You can go on Amazon, they're not expensive. And I want you to use it for 14 consecutive days. And your homework is you're going to contact the show and tell me two things. Number one, what did you think? Was it a positive impact on your sleep? Was it annoying and negative to have this thing on your face? I mean, I'm always surprised when I tell people, once you get some sort of fitness tracker, wear it on your wrist and blah, blah, blah. And they'll come back and say, oh, I just hated that thing on my wrist. Really? Wow. Okay. So it always makes me wonder, are there people who are like, like I, can, I can wear the glasses. I just can't deal with something touching my bridge of my nose and the tops of my ears. I mean, maybe there are people out there. I've never encountered that, but there's, there certainly could be. We know that people struggle with CPAP masks because of comfort. So your homework will be number one, what did you think about the mask? Did it help your sleep? Number two, are you planning to continue to wear it? So all you have to do is, again, DR Chris Winter Twitter, DR Chris Winter Instagram, DR Chris Winter TikTok, just wherever you can find me, just Chris Winter Sleep, put that in the search engine and communicate with me and give me your vote. Well, maybe we'll put a poll up as well and, and see what people think. I'm curious to see if people, if, my guess is 50% of people who tried for two weeks would continue to keep wearing it because it's just that positive when it comes to sleep. So it was interesting to kind of look at research surrounding sleep masks and what it sort of informs us academically and via scholarship about the improvement of sleep, if there is improvement of sleep when you wear a sleep mask. And what I found was that overwhelmingly the research is about the use of sleep masks in ICU situations. It was it was too many to count. So it was so interesting looking up bedding. You know, do different kinds of bedding affect sleep? Crickets. Very difficult to find research about that. Sleep masks, no problem. And not only no problem, but overwhelmingly positive. So let me give you a few. I'm going to give you a few examples. There was a 2018 article in the Journal of Sleep Research, effect of the use of earplugs and eye masks on the quality of sleep in intensive care patients, a systematic review. So they looked at 82 papers found in biomedical databases and found the 19 that were most representative in, in the best studies. It represented about 1,400 uh, subjects. And most of the reviewed studies showed a significant improvement of subjective sleep quality when using described non-pharmacological interventions, meaning sleep mask, and in some situations, earplugs. Uh, a nursing, a critical care nursing study in 2022, effective earplug eye mask combination on sleep and delirium in intensive care unit patients. This was 84 patients, 42 got the sleep mask, 42 did not, and showed significant improvement in sleep in the people who wore the mask. 2024 study, effects of ergonomic sleep mask use on sleep quality and comfort in intensive care patients. 64 patients got the mask, 64 patients did not. Again, the patients with the mask slept much better, had much better objective and subjective quality of sleep. 2017 study, impact of earplugs and eye mask on sleep in critically ill patients, a prospective randomized study, showed that the percentage of deep sleep increase was 21% in the eye mask group versus 11% in the control group. The duration of N3 sleep or deep sleep was higher among patients in their intervention group who wore the eye mask and earplugs on night than the control group. And the number of prolonged awakenings was smaller in the intervention group with the eye mask and earplugs. So, and what was really interesting was despite this overwhelmingly positive and statistically significant effect on sleep, there actually wasn't any change in the critically ill aspect of the outcome, meaning they slept better, they woke up less, they subjectively liked the way they slept better, but it didn't really seem to impact in the study what happened with their baseline illness. I'll give you one more 
a 2020 study entitled Sleep Promotion Among Critically Ill Patients, Earplugs, Eye Mask versus Ocean Sound, a randomized control trial study. Both groups seem to do better than the control group. So what was really striking to me was I, I, I've had recent dealings with an individual who is in the ICU, a close individual. And it's striking to me that with paper after paper after paper, too many to count. I mean, again, 82 papers found in databases in that one review. Now they only looked at 19, but 82 were found. And this was a study in 2018. I just gave you studies from 2022, 2024, and 2020 that all of them seem to indicate this is a positive intervention. Why is this not standard practice? For people going into the hospital, why is this not the standard of care? It's really strange to me. I didn't see any downsides to it. You could get a disposable eye mask there in terms of contamination. I, I don't really know what the downside is. And coming up, we're going to have an episode looking at sleep in hospitality, sleep in hotels, and how high-end hotels are really embracing the science of sleep for their patrons and you know, look at the way this eye mask might be applied to that situation. Because we know sleeping in the dark is better. What is hard to find in a hospital room? It's the darkness, right? Because nurses have to come in and do their thing. They've got to check your pulse ox and your blood sugar and make sure you're positioned properly in the bed and restart your IV drip and turn off the alarm. I mean, it's not a great place in terms of conducive to sleep. An eye mask costs you pennies, probably. Somebody can manufacture those like create like a like a gown that we use for isolation. Just create a disposable eye mask and radically change people's sleep quality. Now, what we have to be careful of is there doesn't really seem to be a change in terms of clinical outcomes that we can prove, but it's something we can think about going forward. So just a couple other medical issues that we can talk about that are related to sleep in that hospital environment. Number one, there was a 2021 study, reduction in anxiety during nail surgery. A 2012 study, sleep quality in patients with acute coronary syndrome. Lots of studies about coronary patients that were pediatric surgery patients, abdominal surgery patients, all of these studies showing improvement just by giving somebody an eye mask prior to surgery. So Outside of improvement in terms of sleep, what are some other benefits? There was a 2020 study in the Behavioral Sleep Medicine Journal called Impact of Individually Tailored Light Mask on Sleep Parameters in Older Adults with Advanced Phase Sleep Disorder. So again, going back to what is advanced phase sleep disorder, that's the individual, typically older patients, who are going to bed a little too early and then problematically waking up too early. Chris, I can't seem to stay up past eight o'clock and I keep waking up at four o'clock in the morning. I can't get back to sleep. So unlike the teenager who is the delayed sleep phase, this is the advanced sleep phase. And this is reminding me that we really need to dedicate an episode to these types of things. There's a lot of misunderstanding about that. So they had 32 patients over the age of 50 who were being put into situations where they had eye masks that were pulsing light. And they were actually showing that the intervention versus the control, both groups, whether there was light or not with the mask, seem to improve the delayed sleep phase situation. And I'm going to post an interesting picture from that study on the on my social media because the eye mask they used was really, was very Tron-like and cool. As there was a 2023 study, wearing an eye mask during overnight sleep improves episodic learning and alertness. I just, one of my Kids just sent me a text saying that he's really trying to shore up his sleep hygiene and has been wearing a sleep mask. He lives in a dorm situation and will continue to live in situations like this that might pose interesting uh, problems to sleep. And he said, yeah, it's really working well for me. And I sent him the study that showed that there, was, there were 94 18 to 35 year olds who for one week used the mask and for one week did not. In just that one week of mask use, there was improved episodic encoding, so memory, and alertness. So better sleep and better learning. So for all my college students out there, give it a shot. We're going to do the one-week trial, right? Or two-week trial. We're going to do two weeks with the mask. Does it improve your sleep? Does it improve your ability to learn 
if you're in an environment where your learning is part of what you do during your typical week. Finally, in terms of benefits, 2023 eye mask and earplugs compared with sleep advice leaflet to improve night sleep duration in pregnancy, a randomized controlled trial, 210 women are randomized to either get eye mask and earplugs or a nice brochure with good information about sleep on it. And fascinatingly, the night sleep duration was increased by 23 minutes in the eye mask and earplug group versus 10 minutes in the literature group. Night sleep duration was longer by 12.9 minutes in the eye mask group versus the literature group, which was statistically significant. So when we're thinking about, hey, Chris, what am I getting out of the sleep mask in terms of my sleep? The study would say, if you're a pregnant woman, about 13 more minutes then you would have gotten not wearing the mask. And it's interesting to go back to our sleep and phone episode. What was the change in sleep when you pulled the phone out of the bedroom? 10 to 20 more minutes of sleep when you didn't have that phone in your face than if you did. So again, we're in probably in that same scale of things. I just got a great uh, email from a woman who's in charge of health at a fantastic private school. It's called Episcopal School in Virginia. I, I did some I did some speaking to their school several years ago, and they were awesome. They're just a fantastic student body, tons of questions, tons of interest in sleep. And she said, you know, hey, Chris, I, I just want to ask you, because my students always ask me the night shift feature on the phone. How effective is it? Does it work? And this was the sort of data that we were talking about. Let's assume the night shift work on an Apple, the night shift works so well, it eliminates the effect of light. We're probably talking about 10 to 20 minutes of sleep that you would have gotten, that you're getting now with the night shift activated and off. It's probably not as good as not having the phone, but it's 10 to 20 minutes. So it really depends upon how you define work. Is there a measurable statistically significant difference between the night shift mode, phone being off, phone in your face? Yes, I'm sure there is. Is that the big problem of a bunch of boarding school students when it comes to their phone, whether the night shift is turned on or turned off. No, it's the phone use keeping them up hours and hours and hours at night. Sure, if you're saying, Chris, I'm gonna keep using my phone hours and hours and hours during the night, would you rather me use the night shift or not? Yes, please do. But I don't think that's necessarily the problem, right? It's, it's the overuse and the inappropriate timing use of the phone, not the necessarily the dimness of the light. I don't think the light dimness is going to overcome anything. So when we talk about sleep masks, there are all kinds, simple fabric mask, you know, 10 bucks on Amazon kind of thing. Great. I use a mask called Manta mask. I'm showing it here on the YouTube page. Nothing really particularly profound about it. It's it's well made. I give them away all the time when I'm around other people. I think the last one I had, I gave away to a Los Angeles Dodger who's like, I like that mask. I'm like here, you can have it because I've I've never used one more than a, you know a couple of days before I tend to give it away. Um, what I like about this is if you can see it, the little parts that go around your eyes, they Velcro and you can move them so they're perfectly spaced for your own eyes. Really like it. Not terribly expensive. Attractive. I keep it in my bag when I when I travel. Another mask that I've used before, and I'll post a picture of it, is the ostrich mask. This is more of a combination sleep mask and pillow, um, but they also make kind of a smaller sleep mask and the little things that go around your, you know, support your head and whatnot. Um, so really like the ostrich. If you want to make a statement, take a look at the ostrich pillow. It's fantastic. Uh, Manta sleep, um, we talked about, and that's M-A-N-T-A-S-L-E-E-P. Um, in terms of the high-tech mask, there is the Aura Circle, and that's the mask I was talking about. If you're looking at this, you actually plug it in, it charges up, it's got speakers in it, it can lead you through uh, meditations, it can lead you through breathing exercises, and if you can see on the video, there is a light. So when you're wearing it, it's totally blacked out. I just put it on, it's noon here right now, and when I put it on, I could see no light. It was completely dark. And what happens is when you use this mask and it's set up properly, as the alarm goes off, the light gets brighter and brighter in the mask. So it sort of simulates a sunrise when you're finishing up either your nighttime sleep or you're finishing up um, from a nap, which is really great. 
if you're uh and there's some other masks out there too oasis sound oasis made a mask called go to sleep mask this one's about the 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 aura circle i believe is about two hundred dollars the oasis glow to sleep mask has light in it too it's about 40 i believe uh, there used to be a mask called Neuron, Neuron, N-E-U-R-O-O-M. I don't think they make that one anymore. And if you're somebody who's like, look, I like the idea of a mask, Chris, but I just can't deal with something on my face. One of the products we talked about during Christmas was the Z-Den, and you can find them at Block Out Light on Instagram. And it's like a little tent that encompasses the, the your head and top part of your body. So you create darkness, but it's not making you feel more suffocated because there's a mask on your face. So that's it. I think a mask is a great way to improve your sleep quality. It's easy to try out. It's cheap. I'm going to challenge everybody once again, 14 days with the mask of your choice. You're going to tell me what mask you chose, how did it affect your sleep, and are you going to continue to wear it? And I'll compile that information for the next visit. We'll post some good stuff about sleep masks on our social media. Again, that's Dr. Chris Winter Instagram, Dr. Chris Winter Twitter, Threads, Blue Sky, uh, TikTok. We're going to put I'm Your Man by Leonard Cohen on the Spotify Sleep Unplugged playlist. We're now on volume two, so you can follow that. And until next week, sleep well.